Hi, everybody. Welcome to He Answers Prayers. I am your lovely host, Vanessa. Today I am here. We are studying pigs in the parlor. So today we are here to continue our lesson day four. I did not have the study yesterday, but I'm here today. I started not to have the study tonight and just come and have a prayer because my stomach is a little upset. So hi, Miss Kitty. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you guys doing? Uh, we are here tonight to continue with our study. And as usual, if you have the book, Get your pigs in the parlor book. And always, as usual, have your Bible handy. And what did I do with my notebook? Where is it? It's supposed to be up here. With the rest of the stuff. And if you like me and you're going to be doing a lot of talking, make sure you have some water handy. I got my distilled water with some strawberries in it. Oh, my goodness, y'all. It tastes so good. So we're going to do as usual. We're going to wait 10 minutes for everybody else to come in and see if any more people come in. I don't know if they're going to come in or not. They might be sleeping already. So how was y'all day today? How was y'all day? How was y'all day? Elizabeth said good. Did y'all cook? Did y'all cook Sunday dinner? Miss Kitty, did you work today? Miss Kitty said, no, Popeye's chicken. Nope, not tonight. I guess it might just be us three, y'all. It might just be me, you, and Miss Kitty all night long. All night, all night, all night long. It might just be us tonight, y'all. Nobody else might not join us. Anybody got a prayer request?
Yeah, my stomach is upset. So that's why I hadn't went live yet because my stomach is upset because of what I ate earlier. I ate that okra. Stomach is upset. I I probably shouldn't be doing this live right now because I'm probably gonna have to run a couple of times. Yeah, I think I need to run right now, y'all. For us to keep everyone in prayer. Yes, we do need to keep everyone in prayer. Y'all, I'm going to go run to the bathroom. If anybody come in, greet them and welcome them and let them know that I'll be right back. Two, two people just came in, but they haven't come in yet. I'll be right back.
Y'all, I thought I had put the computer on mute. Y'all, since I ate earlier today. Since I ate earlier today, I've been back and forth in the bathroom. Okra really, real cute, uh, clean you up. Okra really, real clean you up. We're going to try to have this study tonight, y'all. We might just make it to the first um, chap. I mean, first paragraph. Let's pray before we get started. Father God, as we come to you right now, we thank you, precious Heavenly Father, for the, us journeying together. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you, precious Heavenly Father, for your spirit being amongst us. We thank you, precious Heavenly Father, for your word that is here to feed our soul. We ask you, precious Heavenly Father, to give us wisdom and knowledge and to allow us to hide this word in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are on chapter two, and it says, Our Spiritual Enemies. Our spiritual enemies, I guess it's going to tell us who our spiritual enemies are. It's on page 13, chapter 2, page 13, our spiritual enemies. It said demons are spiritual enemies. And it is the responsibility of each Christian to deal with them directly in spiritual warfare. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. So let's go read. That was Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. So let's go read Ephesians 6. And let's read Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Again, the title is Who Are Our Enemies? Who Are Our Spiritual Enemies? Ephesians 6, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It's the first commandment with promise. That it, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up 
in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart and unto Christ not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servant of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as the Lord and not to man, knowing what knowing that whatsoever good thing a man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master shall also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the, in the evil day, having done all to stand, having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with trust and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So God say put on the whole armor of God and he's listing the armors of God is truth. One of the armor of God is truth. The other one is righteousness and your feet Stop with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the gospel of peace. Above all things, shield of faith. Faith is your shield, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all um, perseverance, and supplication for all saints. And for me, that, utter it, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth loudly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein, I might speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. T Y C H I C U S and beloved brothers faithful ministers in the Lord shall make known 
to you all things, whom I sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye know our affairs, that he might comfort your heart. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you. Grace be all. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in serenity. Amen. Y'all, we need to put on God said. We wrestle not. Hi, Miss Gloria. We wrestle not. We're reading Miss Gloria from Ephesians 6. Verse 11, verse 10 through 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of of the darkness of this world, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle against. See, God is telling us, we wrestle against the rulers of darkness of this world. It is our job to wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto ye the whole armor of God. Because of this, you shall put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your lawns girt about you with truth. Truth is a part of the armor of God, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is the breastplate. And your feet sobbed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is a part of the armor of God. And above all, taking the shield of faith, the shield of faith is a part of the armor of God, wherewith ye shall be able to quench with the shield of faith, you shall be able to quench all fiery doors of the wicked. And you should take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You have to bring the word of God with you too. Praying always, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all persever perseverance and supplication for all saints. For me that utterance, utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I might speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs. And I do, again, T-Y-C-H-I-T-U-S, and beloved brethren, a faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, that he might comfort your heart. Preach peace be unto the un, peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Grace be with all that love the Lord Jesus Christ in serenity. Thank you, Liz Gale. Y'all, welcome to the live chat. Please come in respecting the live chat. Next up, we are reading in Pigs in the Parlor. We're in chapter two. Next, we say, for thy walk in the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, that pulling down of strongholds. Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. Excuse me. <coughs> My mouth is getting dry, y'all. Second Corinthians. Oh, that water tastes good with them strawberries in it. Second Corinthians 10. Three and four. 10, 3, and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Let's read 2 Corinthians 10. Let's read the whole chapter. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in patience am based among you, but being absent and being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech ye that I might not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherein I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and being into kept and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Wow. We're going to have to read this again. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after, after the outward appearance? Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is crisis, even so are we crisis. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, 
which the Lord had given us for edification and not for your destruction. I should, I should not be ashamed. And I am not seen, seen as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters as they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let, us, let such as one think this, that such as we are in the word by letters when we are absent, such as will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that command themselves that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God had distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is of our men's labor, of other men's labor, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our ruler, according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in other man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commended himself is approved, but whom the Lord commended. Mm. Y'all, that's good. Let me read right here where it says, casting down every imaginate. Let me see, where was that? What 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 uh, verse was that? Let me read this again. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. This is birth, uh, chapter three, y'all. Second Corinthians ten, chapter three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity, bringing into captivity, every thought, bringing into captivity, every thought, to the obedience of God. We have to bring into the captivity, even the thoughts that the devil would plant into our, our head, we have to bring them under submission in obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. We have to be ready to obey, to uh to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. 
By being obedient, you revenge disobedience. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts in himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. And they saying, do not boast in the Lord. But y'all, I love this verse. Verse 5. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, y'all. I'm going to have to go back to the bathroom again. I told y'all my stomach is upset. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself, we are supposed to cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. We, it's our responsibility to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. Even our thoughts. Even our thoughts, we are responsible for bringing those thoughts into the obedience of God. Y'all, let me stop this phone. Oh, it stopped. Uh, hey there, Tasha. Yes, we come to the study with your notepad, child, because we be writing down stuff. That is, that is, wow, that is so profound to me. Cast down the imagination and every, the imaginations, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That is 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5. And then verse 4, four for, we, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. I'm going to go until I can't go no more, y'all. Then I'm going to have to run to the bathroom. Uh, then in the book, chapter two, the scripture employs the ana analogy of wrestling, of wrestling in the reference to our warfare with Satan and his host. Wrestling is an accurate and pointed description. It speaks of close quarter fighting, of personal grappling with the powers of darkness. Most of us would prefer to use a giant cannon to blast away these enemies from miles away. But this is not possible. The battle is very personal and close. The enemy is a spiritual is a spiritual one. The weapon is spiritual. Wrestling also suggests pressure tactics. This tells us that Satan, that Satan's tactics is to put pressure on us. Let me put this Bible down. Satan's tactic is to put pressure on us. He does this in the areas of our thought life, emotions, decision makings, and our physical bodies. Believers often feel pressured by the enemy in one way or another. And open and when one is ignorant of Satan's devices, he may turn for relief to various sources. 
but God's remedy for victory over demonic pressure is spiritual warfare. The Bible shows us how the Christian can put pressure upon the demons and defeat them. He must then learn the practical ways in which this is done. He knows through, he must throw away his ineffective fleshly weapons and take up mighty spiritual weapons. The believer must know both his own weaponry and how to employ it and the tactics of the enemy and how to defeat him. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells us for four important things about our spiritual spiritual enemy. First, we are told that we are fighting against principalities. The Greek word for principalities is arkas, A R C H A S. This word is used to describe things in a series such as leaders, rulers, and majesties. These are thus a series of leaders and rulers would describe their rank and organization. So the word principality tells us that satanic kingdoms is highly organized. Wow. Satanic kingdoms are highly organized. Perhaps Satan's forces are much the same in organization as the army of the United States, which has the president as commander in chief, followed by generals, corporals, majors, captains, lieutenants, on down to the privates. Satan is the head of his kingdom and his and has under him a rank of rulers, of ruling spirits, ultimately subject unto him, self. The English word principality is defined as a territory or jurisdiction of a prince or the country that gives title to the prince, Webster. Thus, we see these, we see that these ruling spirits are assigned over areas such as a nation, such as nations and cities. This is, wow. This is borne out by the account in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel was speaking a word from God through prayer and fasting. After three weeks, an angel appeared. The angel explained that he had been dis delayed to getting to Daniel with God's message by an encounter with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. He does not refer to an earthly prince for no mere man could withhold a heavenly messenger. He is speaking of a demon prince. Wow. For this is not for this is clear that there are ruling demon spirits placed by Satan over nations and cities. Wow. In order to carry out his evil purposes. Problem that persist and plague churches and homes can well indicate the spirit, the special evil agents has been assigned to cause trouble in these areas as well. Thus, we discover that our spiritual warfare embraces much more than our individual lives. We are fighting for the warfare of our homes, 
communities, and nations. Wow. The enemy is thoroughly organized. He moves all. He moves. His moves are made with evil designs. Second, we are told that our warfare is against powers. The Greek word translated powers is E-X-O-U-S-I-A-S. The word is accurately translated as authorities. The word tells us that the demons who are placed over various edge areas or territories are given authority to carry out whatever order has been assigned. The Christian soldier needs not to be dismayed or discouraged to learn that those whom he face have been given authority for the believer has even greater authority. He is vested with the authority of the name of Jesus. Wow. So you guys, I am, when I get back, I'm going to run to the bathroom. When I get back, I want you guys to go to Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter six. And be reading the whole chapter until I come back. Ephesians chapter six. We were already, weren't we in Ephesians a minute ago? Let's go back to Ephesians chapter six, y'all. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I told y'all my stomach is upset, uh, but I'm still trying to continue this study with an upset stomach. This water is really good. With these strawberries in it. We got five people in the house. Four thumbs up. Can we get a roll check? If you're here, say present. If you're here, say present. Elizabeth Gale, say present. I'm gonna go get some more water too while I'm in the bathroom. Shanette said present. Hi, Shanette. You guys, while I'm in the bathroom, I want you to read uh, Ephesians chapter six. You could probably read it one or two times while I'm in the bathroom. However many times you could read it, just read it over until I return. I'm gonna go. I got an upset stomach tonight. And uh, I guess my stomach is upset that okra is just doing what it what it does. And I'm gonna get some more water while I'm over there. So you guys, uh, it seems like to me the only people are present is Elisa Gale and Shanette. That's it. Miss Kathy, are you in the house today? I hope you're feeling better. So I'm going to take my phone with me. I'm going to be in the comments. I'm going to go to the bathroom right quick. And I will be right back. Read Ephesians 6 until I come back, please.
that was a false alarm. I don't know why. So I might end up having to go back. Uh, Y'all try frozen strawberries in your water. They taste so good. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I fill a glass up of water a couple of times before I end up eating the uh, strawberries. Okay, let's uh, read again. Ephesians 6. Um, Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take ye up. Take ye Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in all the evil day. And having done all to stand, even after you have done all you can do to stand, stand therefore having your learns girded about with truth and having saying, don't give up, just continue to stand. Stand in truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet sobbed with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all things, the shield of faith. Above all things, keep the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all with the shield of faith you shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked <clears throat> and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there, there unto all with all perseverance, and supplication for all saints. Okay, let's go back to the book. Where did I leave off at? Okay, I think I left off right here on page 15. It says, secondly, we are told that our warfare is against the powers Oh, I read that one. Uh, I was getting ready to come down to, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In the name, in my name, shall thou cast out devils, Mark 6 and 17. So that was Mark 6 and 17. So let's go read Mark 6. Mark 6. Can somebody type down Mark 6 just in case somebody come in the room and want to know where we at? Or if somebody watching the live later, they might come in the live or the video and click on it somewhere in the middle. Don't know what's going on. There go my stomach again, y'all. Mark 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogues. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence had this man these things? From whence had these, this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrapped 
or wrath by his hands. Is not this the carpenter that the son of Mary and the brother James and uh, and Jose of the Judah of Judah and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So they sitting up here saying he don't have authority to say the things that he's saying because he was just a carpenter's son. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. He said the only place a prophet is without honor is in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Wow. Wow. Father God, forgive us. Forgive those who hear the word. Forgive those who have stood in your presence, but reject the truth because they are looking at the messenger. Forgive them, Lord. And he could there do no more mighty work. He couldn't do no mighty work because they wouldn't receive him. He could do no more mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the village teaching. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should take anything that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only and a script, no bread, no money in their purses. But be sob with sandals and, no, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, in what place soever you enter into a house, there abide till you depart from that place. And whatsoever shall not, and whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with all many that were sick and healed them. And the King Herod heard of, yeah, we read this before, and King Herod heard of him and his name was spread abroad. And he said, the John the Baptist, and they said, and he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead and therefore might, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias and others said that it is a prophet or as one of the prophets. But, but when Herod heard, therefore of he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead for Herod himself had sent forth and laid, hit, laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for uh, Herodus' sake, his brother 
Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John said, for John had said without Herod unto Herod, it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodus had a quarrel against him and would have him killed, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and, a ho and, and holy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, that I'm reading in uh, verse 21, y'all. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod of his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of Herod is, and when the daughter of, and when the daughter of the said Herod is came into and danced and pleased Herod and they that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, ask of me whatever thou wilt and I will give it to thee. And he swore unto her, whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it to thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. Wow. And she came in straight way. Did not this go to show y'all when Jesus, when they were saying just now that there are wicked and evil people in high places. This go to show you that the demonic spirits and forces are in high places with power to abuse and use that and use that power however they will against the kingdom of God. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou will give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceedingly sorry, yet for his oath's sake and for their sake, which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executor and commanded his head be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison and bought his head into a charger and gave it to the damsel and the damsel gave it to her mother. Have mercy, Lord. That go to show you, y'all, when the devil is against us, he will use whoever he will use. The devil will convince. The devil can be an apparent and convince the child to do evil. Have mercy, Lord. And brought the head in a charger and gave it to the damsel and the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they taught. And he said unto them, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there are many coming and going and they 
had no leisure as much as to eat. And they departed into the desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing and many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all cities and out with them and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. They were as sheep. God had compassion on them for they were as sheep having not a shepherd. And he began to teach many things. Let me see how long is this chapter because I think I got to go to the bathroom, y'all. And when the day was now forespent, his disciples came into him and said, this is a desert place. And now the same is for pressed. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the village and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, shall we go and buy 200 pennies worth of bread and give them to eat? He said unto them, how many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say five loaves and two fish. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies unto the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to the heavens and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to the disciples to sit before them. And the two fish divided he among them all, and they did all eat and were filled. And when they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish, and they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Y'all, that's going to continue. I'm going to read that when I come back. I want y'all to go back. I just, I really, really, really got sad. I really got sad about the evil and wickedness that surrounds us on a daily basis. And that when we speak the truth, when we speak the truth, the devil don't like it. The devil don't like when we speak the truth and he will turn around and attack us and try to even claim our life because we speak the truth. Now, John the Baptist was murdered and beheaded because King Herod had took on his brother's wife. And King and John the Baptist told him that it is not lawful to sleep with your brother's wife and take her on. The brother's wife didn't want to hear that. She wanted to be married to the king. So she, even though she could not put John the Baptist to death, she wanted to. So she used her daughter, who was the king's niece, who was his brother's daughter 
the king's niece danced for him and it pleased him. And he, obviously he had a harmonging spirit because he was sleeping with his brother's wife and the dance of his own niece pleased him. But the mother had a plan and she wanted to use her own daughter to ask of the king something that he could not reject her. And see, let me tell you something. When, when God said that there are principalities, we fight against principalities and evil spirits that are in high places. The devil is in high places to carry out the works of the devil, to destroy the works of God. And so when you look at people that are of the world carrying out the works of Satan, you cannot be fascinated by those people because the devil has an auxiliary of disciples to carry out his, his, his will and his deed. So I want y'all to read Mark 6 until I come back from the bathroom. Just read Mark 6. I stopped at verse 44. So when you get to verse 44, you could stop there or you could start back over and read it again. And let that word seek into your heart to show you how evil the world is, how evil and wicked the devil is. He come to kill, steal, and destroy y'all. But don't fear because just like John the Baptist died for the truth, his life was not in vain. His life was not in vain. And he went on to be with God. So regardless of the devil, and we should not fear death, we should always speak the truth no matter what and no matter who, no matter who the truth is spoken about, let's speak the truth. Even the king, John the Baptist spoke the truth to the king and it cost him his life because the king's wife had a problem with the truth. So y'all, let's. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. It might be another false alarm, but let me go.
I'm back. I'm back. Um. Okay, y'all. Um, let's finish reading this. Where did I stop off at? Okay, uh, I think it's page 15. It says, this verse tells us that the believer has greater authority than the authority of demons. Demons are forced to yield to the authority of the name of Jesus. This scripture reveals that demons not only have authority, but they have power. In Luke Chapter 10, verse 19, we read of the power of the enemy. The word for power is Greek, and Greek is dunamis. Our English word dynamo or dynamite comes from this word, yet this fact will not Deont the Christians, the Christian warrior will not daunt the Christian warrior, for he has the promise of God for the word that he can have greater power than of the enemy. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Acts 1 and 8. Y'all, let's turn to Acts 1 and 8. Excuse me. We're going to end this at the end of uh, page 15. We're almost there. Acts 1 and 8. Let's go to Acts 1 because we just read Acts 1 and 8. Acts 1. Y'all kind of quiet tonight. Is everybody okay? X one. X one. The former treatise treatise have I made of the ropus. The ropus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also. He showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, which said he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall baptize with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time 
or the season which the Father had put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he was as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus is which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So he gonna come, he gonna, he gonna return the same way he went up. Then returned they into Jerusalem from the mount called Oliver, which from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went up into the other room, upper room, and were abide with Peter and James and John and Andrew. Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Aphilus, and Simon, Zulatus, and Judas, Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one according in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about a hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guided to them to take Jesus. For he was murdered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst as under in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known about all the dwellers of Jerusalem, inasmuch as that field is called, is in proper tongue, a siladila that it is said, the field of blood. So when um, Judas took the money that he got from betraying Jesus and bought a field and he killed himself there and the field is called the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms let his, his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bispocracy let another take. Wherefore of these men which were accompanied with us all the time that the Lord went into and out among us, being from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up 
from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, which surname was Justus, and Mathus, they prayed and said, Thy Lord, which knowest the heart of man, show it whither of these two men has chosen, that he might be part of his ministry and apostleship, for which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go in his own place. So they was trying to find somebody to replace Judas. And they gave forth their lots. And the lots fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So Matthias became one of the 12 apostles. Y'all, I forgot when I went to the bathroom, wherever I had left off, I was reading and I was supposed to come back and finish. I forgot that. So let's finish. Uh, it says, the power of the believer comes to him with a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows that his followers need both authority and power to deal with the enemy. When he sent the 12 out in ministry, he sent them fully equipped. Luke 9 and 1, then he called the 12 disciples together and gave them power, dunamis, and authority, exhaustia, over all devils, to cure diseases, Luke 9 and 1. Let's go to Luke 9. That's going to be in for today's study, y'all. Luke 9. Luke 9 and 1. Luke 9, it's a long chapter. Then he called the 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing for, oh, we just read that. I just read that. Oh, that must be where I stopped off at. Let me see. Yeah, we read that. Oh, that's the one where I like on verse 62 when it says, Jesus said unto them, no man having put his hand to the plow and look back is fit to enter the kingdom of God. No man who put his hand to the plow and look back is fit to enter the kingdom of God. So you guys, that is going to be it for today's message. I want to go back and read. I don't know which one. I'm going to read this in my own personal time over again. I think it was Corinthians, Second Corinthians 2, when they put uh, John to death. I don't know why. That just really spoke to me. It's so sad how the enemy works against us just because we speak the truth and that lets you know that people are going to come against you 
for speaking the truth of God. And we can't even be afraid of death. We can't. So I don't know what was that Ephesians was it Mark? I don't think it was Mark 6. I'm trying to find it, y'all. But I'm gonna read this again after I end this live, and I'm just gonna really pray on this because like I said, it just really spoke to me. And the devil is very busy. And it just really spoke to me. It made me very, very, very sad. Anybody know what chapter that was or Bible that we read about um, John? Oh, it was Mark 6. Mark 6. I'm going to read that. So, y'all, we are at the end of page 15. So, we will continue our studies on the next day. I don't know when the next day a Bible study is going to be because I have something else that is I have to take care of. So, I don't know when the next day of our Bible study is going to be, but I am going to be going live on Tasty Mug Bang Eat. So, y'all will probably be informed of what's going on. Anybody else have anything that they want to say about tonight's message? Any questions about tonight's message? Any comment about tonight's message? What did you learn? What did you get from tonight's word? Uh, any prayer requests or anything like that? Can I get a roll check, please? I know y'all tired and y'all ready to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. I'm not going to do a live tonight because I don't really sleep that well when I do the lives. That's why I was doing the lives in the other room with the water distiller so you guys can chat in there. But if I do do a live, if I do do a live in the um, other room, it will be for you guys to uh, chat in there. So, but I'm not going to do a live in the room. Uh, with me because I'm going to try to get up tomorrow and take care of some business. But anybody else have anything to say about tonight's chat? Yeah, my stomach is tore up from the floor. Up. So I'm going to end this live in a prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word that you have brought forth to us tonight, dear Lord. We ask you to let this word speak to our hearts and minds and to transform our lives, Lord Jesus. We ask you to let us hide this word in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Father God. We ask you to touch each and every person that was in this life today, dear Lord. And we ask you, Father God, to heal the sick and deliver us from all forms of attacks from Satan, dear Lord. We ask you to show us, precious Heavenly Father, where in our lives we are wrong and where we need to make our, where we need to surrender our will to the submission of your will, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you have done for us and those things to come. We ask you, Father God, to touch the, the body and the mind and the soul of Miss Gloria and Miss Kathy right now, dear Lord. We ask you to deliver them from their afflictions, Father God, 
And we ask you, precious Heavenly Father, to touch them and encamp your angels round about them. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. <coughs> Thank you, Liz Gill. So, you guys, do y'all want me to start a chat for y'all with the water distiller going for y'all to chat in? Or, because I know Miss Kitty like to stay up all night long. I don't know if you want to be in there by yourself, Miss Kitty, because everybody else might be ready to go to bed. But I'm going to go to bed because I got something to do tomorrow and <sighs> thank y'all for joining me. I love y'all. So I will talk to you guys later. Y'all pray for me as I pray for y'all. Make sure y'all pray for everybody tonight as y'all go to bed. Don't forget to pray for Miss Kitty. I mean, uh, don't forget to pray for Miss Kathy. Don't forget to pray for Miss Gloria. Don't forget to pray for Marie. And is there anybody else? Well, I don't know if you gonna, you're you not going to have nobody to talk to, Miss Kitty. Nobody else might not be in there. So um, I think maybe everybody just need to go rest tonight. Just go rest. We're going to be good. I don't even know what the watch time looks like on. Let me check it out. Let me see what the watch time looks like on ASMR for Christians. I don't think that many people is uh, Elizabeth Gill, them people gone already. Don't even give them any more attention. Don't give them any more attention. That did, did you see that bother me? It didn't bother me. Don't give them any more attention, please. That's the devil trying to disrupt our fellowship and we're not going to get them no attention. Let me see what the watch time report is for ASMR. For Christians, it is 2,500, I mean 2,496. So it's almost 2,500. So... I don't know if y'all want me to start the live over there. If y'all feel like staying in, if any of y'all going to be in, in the live tonight or not. But y'all make sure y'all um, keep Miss Gloria and Marie and Miss Kathy and Miss Kathy's daughter in y'all prayers. And also, Shanette's mother, make sure y'all keep Shanette's mother in your prayers. She is battling with some different things, uh, some different attacks from Satan. So uh, y'all continue to pray for her, for her. She has some different, some strongholds in her life that need to be broken, that could only be broken through the blood of Jesus. By four, by four a.m. By four a.m. By four a.m. So. Yeah, Miss Kitty, stuff like that, we don't time them out. We just go ahead and 
hide them from the channel. I already hear them. Yeah, we don't time them out for stuff like that. They don't need no time out. They need to just not even be able to comment. Why are you going to bed so late, Elizabeth? So I guess I'll start the live. Uh, you don't have to do nothing, Elizabeth, but live and die. You need to carry your butt to bed. But anyway, y'all, I'm going to... Uh, I am going to start, I think I'm going to start another live on the ASMR channel and whoever wants to be in there talking. Y'all, Miss Kitty going to be there. So if y'all are up and y'all want to talk, go over there and talk in the comments to Miss Kitty and watch the water distiller and listen to the fan. <laughs> so I'm going to end this live and I'm going to start another one in the other room with the water distiller. I will talk to you guys later. I love y'all and I'm going to see y'all somewhere tomorrow. Okay, good night. Mm -hmm. Good night, everybody.